Hello and welcome to this session on hypospadias. I am Dr. Satish Agarwal. I am the chairman of pediatric surgery and pediatric urology at Sir Gangaram Hospital in New Delhi. The topic of hypospadias is important from the perspective of MS surgery candidates, DNB surgery candidates, DNB and MCH candidates in pediatric surgery. For MS and DNB surgery, it usually comes as a short case. For DNB and MCH in pediatric surgery, it is one of the core areas and you must know almost everything about hypospadias. So this talk will be essentially aimed at the understanding of the anatomy of hypospadias, the etiology and the clinical examination on hypospadias. There are certain aspects which will be more important for MCH or DNB pediatric surgery candidates, but the, the more general aspects will be applicable for MS and DNB in surgery. MS and DNB surgery candidates need not know the details about surgery, but for pediatric surgery super speciality, they need to know a lot about surgical aspects also. So what is hypospadias? Hypospadias is as described here, developmental hypoplasia of the ventral aspect of the penis. Now it involves several components, the urethra, the corpus spongiosum, the dartos, the skin and the glands. So almost everything on the ventral aspect of the penis are deficient. Okay? The three salient features of hypospadias are location of the meatus which is abnormal. Either it is distally located or very proximally located or somewhere in the middle but anywhere on the ventral aspect but not at the tip of the glands because tip of the glands is the normal meatus. The second component is ventral curvature. Ventral curvature means also known as cordy. Say for example in this picture if you see there is this glands which seems to be tilted onto the phallus and the third is a dorsally hooded foreskin. Now, if you look at this foreskin, it is in the form of a hood on the, on the dorsal aspect, just like you wear the, the, those hoodies um, that you wear where the face is exposed, but everything else is covered. Now, when, when you look at it, the incidence of hypospheres is increasing. You know that Currently, the, uh, the practice of antenatal ultrasounds has led to a lot of uh, medical termination of pregnancy because many defects, the birth defects are picked up antenatally. That is not true with hypospadias. Hypospadias, in fact, the incidence is increasing. And it's very interesting to know why it is happening so. It is happening because there are environmental androgen disruptors. There is increased use of pesticides and fertilizers in the fields and therefore this disease is more common in patients coming from farmers community because they use pesticides and fertilizers, chemical fertilizers and their women folk gets exposed to it during their pregnancy. Also another aspect why the incidence is increasing is because there has been an increase in the genetic pool of hypospadias. How? Earlier on, many patients of hypospadias will not have got operated and they would remain unmarried. So they would not transmit uh, the genes to their offsprings. But nowadays what is happening is more and more hypospadias patients are getting operated because we are focusing on cosmetic repair of hypospadias. So they do get married and then they pass it on to their next generation. The 
effect of environmental androgen disruptors is evident also in the form of increased incidence of undescended testis, increased incidence of male infertility. In short, we can say that the world is turning anti-male. You could imagine uh, the use of oral contraceptives. The oral contraceptive pills are made of synthetic, made up of synthetic estrogens. And these synthetic estrogens are not degraded. And when uh, it is passed in the urine of these women who take oral contraceptives, the water keeps on circulating. And the water that you drink will have certain parts of, of synthetic estrogens in them. And especially when you use them, use this water in plastic bottles, the effect multiplies. And therefore, the incidence is increasing uh, for uh, this condition because of environmental androgen disruptors. As I said, there is increased genetic pool. So, hypospadias does run in families. For example, brothers of an index child will have 15 percent more incidence. Fathers, so from father to the son is less, but brothers, if one child has suffered from hypospadias, the next male child will also have hypospadias to the tune of almost 15 percent. And so, family history also important. Classification of hypospadias is essentially dependent on the location of the meatus. And almost all books and reference articles will mention this classification depending on the meatal location. Uh, you can call them anterior, middle and posterior hypospadias or you could be more specific like glandular and subcoronal for the anterior, then distal, mid and proximal penile for the middle and then penoscrotal, scrotal and perineal for the posterior hypospadias. What is to be remembered is, as you go proximal, as you go proximal, the severity of hypospadias keeps on increasing. As you go proximal, the severity increases. Now, that was the classification based on the meatal location. When you look at the actual defect as a surgeon, then this can be very misleading. For example, in this child, as you can see, the meatus is somewhere here. That's the meatus, which is almost distal or maybe mid penile. But when you look at the skin proximal to the meatus, this skin, this skin is very deficient. So, in this child, the defect actually starts from here. Because what happens is, as I mentioned that the hypospadias is a ventral hypoplasia, all the components are splayed outwards. The corpus spongiosum, which covers the urethra, starts deviating at this level and goes like this. So, you can imagine hypospadias is a ventral defect. If you consider the meatus as the starting point, then this is the defect. This is the triangular defect. But when you consider this skin also proximal to the meatus, then the defect becomes like this. So, it is a much more severe anomaly and this is what I meant when I said that the meatal location itself can be misleading. A little bit of embryology of hypospadias. It is important to know that the hypospadias anomaly results from an abnormal folding of genital folds. For MCH persons, embryology of genitourinary system as such is very important. You just cannot escape. So, I will suggest that you, you must read it from a good surgical embryology book uh, in short only. No need to know great details but you need to know where it originates from, at what time of gestation it originates from, what else is going on during that phase of embryogenesis and what else can be, can go wrong 
during that uh, period of embryogenesis. So, sufficient to remember that it is abnormal folding of the genital folds. And remember, this is folding. Urethra is like a plate and then it folds into a tube. And as the urethra folds, everything else with the urethra folds. Outside the urethra is the corpus spongiosum. Outside the spongium is the dartos. Outside the dartos is the skin. So, everything folds like this. And if the process fails, then everything unfolds. Let us now come to the anatomy. So, before I go to the glance rotation, I want you to appreciate this fact again that here this is the meatus, the blue mark that I have put and this is the point where this corpus spongiosum, if you can see the corpus spongiosum, this is the corpus spongiosum, corpus spongiosum which is complete here. But from this point onwards, it is deviated on these two sides. And in the center is very thin epithelium through which you can see this feeding tube. This feeding tube is going through the urethral meatus and you can see a portion of the feeding tube. And this is again what I meant was that the meatal location is very distal, but the defect starts quite proximal. So, it is important from surgical point of view that the hypospadiac deformity starts where the corpus spongiosum starts deviating on two sides and this triangular defect is, is from here to here, not from here to here. Okay. Now, glance. The glance, if you notice, that this was supposed to be the line of glans plasty. The glans was supposed to be joined at these at this line, but it is deviated. The distance between this and this is actually reflecting the glans abnormality or glans rotation. And this glans is always rotated downwards, outwards and laterally in all hypospadias. The degree of this rotation will vary from person to person and you can judge it just by looking at the glance of that particular child. This aspect is very important when you come to consider the design for the operation on a given patient of hypospadias.